Good morning, good evening, and hello wherever you sit and listen and watch. I hope you're doing really well. Uh, this is a medical cannabis show promoting organic growing and legal practices. So if you're into your synthetics and illegal practices, this probably isn't going to be the place for you, but you still might learn anyway. I hope we can um, change some of your unsafe, not healthy practices. Well, they're not practices. This probably isn't going to be the place for you, but you still might learn it. They're not unhealthy, but you know what I mean? The best health to get the best out of your equal cannabis. Hello, hello, where's the background? There we go. So there's not much on again today. It's an open topic again. So um, please, I welcome all your questions to start it off to see what type of a, a show that we can cover. Last week was a hormones one, which was quite good. And I didn't get monetized for it for some reason. <clears throat> so what's going to be today? Uh, G'day, J Thomas P, how you going? And Vinny, how you going, Vin? Nice to see you. Jeff Rapalia, how you going, mate? You'd be uh, pretty happy about now, I reckon. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Um, all right. Well, I'm just waiting for a few questions, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm just going to start talking on something related to medical cannabis. Maybe microbes. I like microbes. Haven't been into them for some time. I've done a few microbe courses. What can we talk about about microbes? Uh, let's just have a look. All right. Because chat's not running wild. So I'm going to start it up and just have a bit of a show some slides through microbes. That's my signal. Is it coming through good too? I hope so. Microbes. It's looking good. Well, away yet. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. All right, microbes. So I'll start into that. Unless I wait a little bit longer, is there, if there's any more questions coming through. Matthew Flick, hey, um, <clears throat> today's an open topic, mate. So if you've got any questions, please put them in so we can start a bit of a topic, just so I don't start my own. So I'd rather help you guys out than you just listen to me. Hey, Terence, snazzy time. Yep, he's got all, all the good snazzy stuff. <laughs> you like that word? You adopted that, didn't you, mate? <laughs> it's good. I like it too. It's very mellow. I think I got it from um, the Brits. They're always with their snazzy things. <laughs> yeah. Dave, how's it going, Dave? 1969. It's a bit hot for the next few days. Dave said, yes, there's a big band coming across the whole of the East Coast. It's blooming horrible. When's summer supposed to be? Uh, well, they they uh, they do the seasonal clock different. My mother, so they said that summer's supposed to end at the start of July, but it's supposed to go by the solstice and the equinoxes. That's when the seasons come and go. Um, yeah, so it's by Mother Nature. We've still got a few more days of summer left, but by the government, uh, we've got we're three weeks into autumn. So, yeah, give it a few more days and hopefully it'll bloom and go. But, yeah, I, I hate the heat too, mate. I'm with you, Dave. Oof. Ned Kelly, how you going, Ned Kelly? And thanks for the support, Terence. McKenna down under. I'm going to start talking about microbes. There's nothing in here to get me going. All right. <clears throat> I've said it a few times. Where is it present? Let's see what's in the microbe slides. Allow. Uh, microbes. This one. I'm just starting here. See where see what's going on. This is in your medical cannabis plants. There's all different types of microbes that live everywhere. Remember in one gram of soil, there's a billion different micro oh, a mil, at least a million different species of microbes so there's just and remember a microbes life is a you put a full stop with a pen on a paper 
and that's its lifespan. That's how much it travels. So it virtually doesn't move. So it's got to be vectored around or transported around by something. So these are some of the spots on the plant. Let me zoom in here. That have, so right up the top, where all the, the apical meristems are and the buds form, there's even ones in the buds. So I'm not going to go through and name them all because there's probably, well, there's a lot of beneficials too that I use, or bacillus species, the mycobacterium, enterobacter, use that, brutalum, BB, yep. Prostosporium, no. Anyway, I'm going to, um, they're everywhere. So if you've got those growers that grow, see even in the seeds, that they produce the seeds. So organic growers produce seeds with microbes in, bring them across border lines, and it's illegal to do that because it could um, open up a new species in a new area that's going to just spread and take over. Remember their, their rate in which they spread is E. coli, is an example, if it's put in the right conditions with the right, exactly the right what it wants, it can travel around the planet in 48 hours because of its multiplications that they do, because they, they, they divide through budding of their cells and that can happen in minutes and seconds sometimes, even in the right environment where plants, it's every 15 to six cannabis plants, every 15 to 16 hours, the cells divide. So, don't know where it's like, oh, that's right. So organic growers that grow, they'll have these beneficials and non-beneficial bacteria and microbes in their seeds. So when you sprout them, you've got a higher chance in them germinating because they've got microbes to help them. There might be like Enterobacter, for instance. That's a nitro um, uh, nitrifying bacteria. So it'll give it a little bit of nitrogen when it starts off. So stuff like that, that's really, really helpful. But if you get those people that grow in inside where most of the big seed production companies, they're all inside. So they're all climate controlled, but they don't use microbes. They're all done by uh, deep water culture and by the hydroponic method. So they don't really introduce much into the system. So just to keep it pretty sterile. So they don't have this good starting off chance so the people that get the seeds from those types, you might struggle a bit to germinate the seeds, but from the organic producers like myself, yeah, you give a bit of a kickstart. Down the leaves, there's just plenty all over the leaves, everywhere, on top and underneath. The more you put in there, it helps with the uh, introduction of new species because if, there's, if they're caned, like if you're walking into a crowded exhibition grounds, you're not going to really reproduce in there. But if you're walking into a big open field, you can reproduce in there quite well. And it's the same for the microbes. And yep, right on the petioles, the tips and the stems and, and the roots. So everywhere. Beneficial fungi and bacteria. And good substrate, good soil has an equal amount of um, unbeneficial bacteria as well, believe it or not. They're supposed to work in harmony. Right. The most common endophytes harbored in different tissues in cannabis, obtained from different geographical locations. So, yes. So, of course, it depends on where you are to what you're going to pick up. That's why they can't put seeds over the border because um, you're going to introduce possibly new ones. All right, that's the first slide down. A few more to go. I'll stop, see if there's any questions from that. Uh, snazzy morning, Ned Kelly. Here you go. I'm hit the chat. Thank you. Aussie Autos. Here you go, mate. Lene, how are you? Kemet four three two. How is it going? All right. I'll get back to the microbes in medical cannabis. So I'll share screen. Uh, present, share screen. And I hope everybody uses their beneficial microbes too. They're really, they do help in different scenarios. Uh, I suppose I'll, I'll talk through this one. This is an exp um, assignment, a one month long assignment that I did to see the phases well, we'll go through the phase of microbial growth. So you go through a log, an exponential, or a, sorry, it starts off with a lag, L-A-G, 
and then it goes into the log or exponential phase and then it's stationary and then there's a death phase. And that varies on their time down the bottom here and on the left is the viable cells. And on the right, here is the optimal density or the turbidity. And it varies, depends on different conditions that they're in and what they're given. Uh, like oxygen is a terrific electron acceptor. So if it's got oxygen there, it'll just exponentially go, go, go. And then the oxygen runs out and it's got to go to nitric oxide <clears throat> or, or a nitrate or a sulfur dioxide or something else, an oxygen containing molecule that's not oxygen but has oxygen in it. And that's where it'll stationary and then that'll run out of that and it'll go into its death phase. That's basically how a species of microbe work. Over here, this is an uh, experiment on root T. Root, no, it's not. This is compost tea with microbes in it. For, to, what was that? I'm just going to read the outcome because I can't remember what I did it here. Oh, here we go. For one month during, no, doing worm extract tea or leachette, that was leaching out of the bucket. My brew kept a stationary phase leachette, was collected over 48 hour period. Next, I will try brewing the leachette. My concern is new drops won't have enough time to oxygenate. Possibly anaerobic pathogens might stay in the substrate. I want something with bubbles to rid any problems of that anaerobic. Okay, over here, it's just I plotted charts and did different tests at different times to see what the substrate was reading and then plotted it just to see how it was going and to see what phase it was in. So you can see after is down the hours down the bottom, so after two days, it was pretty much still keeping a stationary phase. So that's because I had the, did I have the air pump in there? Can't remember. Yeah. And then here's a root tea. So this is a pretty cool one. So if you get your, your roots and you wash them out with all um, tealinized water, reverse osmosis water, spring water, and then you'll measure them. And then instantly, once you put it under the right conditions, it starts massively exponentially going up with its reproduction and then it tapers off a bit and then it goes and then it starts rising again when it's different microbes are being produced and release different things to get the substrate to, to for them to use those molecules for it to start reproducing and going higher again. There's the second one. All right, I'll stop on that. See if there's anything. We got anything? I'll just change the connection because I can see I want to show something and it just took a delay. So that means there's a bit of a delay. Are you guys having a delay hearing me? Can you tell me, please? I'm just going to change connections. If you're on Wi-Fi, try plugging it into a router or moving closer to it. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just going to keep going. Um, going to get some predatory mites tomorrow. Prevention is the key. A couple of white flies in the traps. Oh, yeah. So Aussie Autos has got some of those white sticky traps. Oh, sorry, yellow sticky traps. Oh, you can get other colours too. The green, they reckon, is good for trips. But, um, yeah, and that's what you use to measure to see what's going on in your little area. And he's found some white flies, so he's gonna go and get some uh, Bouveria bassiana, possibly, or he's gonna get some, uh, what else is good for white flies? Montudrenesis, um, and some other beneficials that are going to help him out. 
So instead of going and spraying or doing other unsafe practices that are going to, it, they work, they'll kill the white flies like all the shops tell you, but they're going to kill all your other microbes and all your beneficials that are going to help the soil. So that's why people struggle everywhere because they spray with pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, all those sorts of bad things. And side is a, the Latin for kill. So fungi, you know, it's killing fungi. It's killing insects. It's killing, it's just not not good, mate. So good good practices, Ozzy Autos. Keep up the good work, my friend. Oh, and ladybugs he's getting. Yep. And ladybugs, they're good for uh, thrips. No, no, sorry, for aphids. So if you see any aphids, yes, you'll get just go out and pluck some ladybugs and flick them wherever they are on your um, the aphids, and they'll stay there because they'll be so stoked, the ladybugs. They'll go around and start chomping and get rid of your aphid problem. Also, a good sign for aphids too, while we're on these microbes, is ants. Ants can harbour aphids. They farm them. Uh, I've got, where's that video? This one's a show. Uh, yeah, it's only 16 minutes in. While we're on to it, it's a bit of a microbe topic. Where is it though? We're going to have to find it now. Um, I'll try and find it though. It's pretty cool. Where is it? So I'm talking about ants farming microbes, and that's what you have to watch out for. I did a bit of a, a talk a while ago on the ants as pesticides, and it's true because they do. They walk around, they get rid of lady ladybugs, sorry, they get rid of grasshoppers and, and all sorts of things that aren't there. They'll just walk past them and make them jump off. So you can use them as pesticides, but you have to be careful. If you've got an abundance of them, is there a video here? Oh, there's no video. Right, looks like you're going to get a few few photos um actually it's not the photo there it is where are we looking back here i got to share screen slides no wrong one share screen photos this one so if you get an abundance of ants let's just start looking but look a bit harder and if you look a bit harder here you'll see that the ants are actually farming aphids so right in there there are the little round aphids they're going and the aphids are reproduct reproducing so what the ants do they want their honeydew out of them so they will trans pick up the aphids and put them into new spots on the plant so it can get more honeydew <laughs> so they're farming the aphids i'll go through a few more there might be better ones Yeah, look at that, the ant. He wasn't moving too fast, I reckon. <laughs> and see the little white, that's the little, the larva that they're, of the aphids. All right, I'll zoom in a bit. No, doesn't work very good. There we go. You see little clear aphids around there, little solid things. There's, that's a nymph, and that's when it's a bit older. And these species of aphids are very small, as you can see, because that's looking underneath the leaf. There you go, a bit better. Oh, there you go. The two-spotted aphid. See the two spots at the back? If you want to diagnose things, you take a photo, zoom in, use a microscope app, if you haven't got a microscope, and put in as much things you can into Google. So you put in here, round green tiny insect and fish images and then see what comes up and here you put maybe two dots at the back and that would help you and then straight away you get a photo of what this is and then you know how to combat the problem yeah look at that that's disgusting isn't it but still it finished fine perfect as there's no need to stress you just got to manage these, these conditions oh that's if yeah, fungal resistant varieties this was a dead bit underneath it. Anyway, yeah, I don't want to go into fungal. It's microbes. I suppose it is. That's more genetics. Fun, fungal resistant genetics only harbour and pregerminate hyphae fungal spores on dead bits. So you can see right under the leaf here where it was trying to grow. That's just, This is a dead bit and everywhere else on the live tissue is fine. So if I was to... If this person wants to leave little bits of dead bit here, so this was dead, 
that's going to keep getting so you'd have to cut that off now if you, if you didn't remove those bits this hyphae will jump onto that because that's dead tissue and can't reject the germinating cells they put up this uh, fungal resistance is have stronger cell walls so the they can't penetrate it it's rad it's such a benefit in your genetics but that's this is to do with breeding All right that'll do Right. Oh, any questions from that? Uh, things have moved on a bit, so I'm going to scroll up a bit here. Uh, ladybugs. Yes, we're a bit off topic then. Dave says, "Hey, Aaron. Oh, he's talking to someone else. Okay. Oh, there's a question mark there. How much do they change you for ladybugs, or do you just find them? Uh, yeah, you can buy them through. If you Google it, you can buy them. Buy big boxes of them." Get whatever number you want. They usually come in large numbers, unfortunately. But um, if you haven't got anything more than a few flying around, you might be able to go out and grab some ladybugs from outside and introduce them, Dave. Scrolling down. Kemet. What's Kemet say? H2O2, hydrogen peroxide in the brew should fix with air pump. No, mate. Hydrogen peroxide kills other beneficials as well. That's the thing. These, they tell you all this stuff you can do with it and it's just going to kill other things. It's got too much oxygen in it and it over-oxygenates things and they die. It's the, it throws things out of whack and it kills beneficials. That's, I don't suggest using H2O2 to fix it. Hey, Mick S, how you going, mate? Got distracted cleaning, says, yeah, okay, that's no good. Here we go. What's Kemet say? Phenyl tea spray call the ladybugs. Okay, so he sprays phenyl tea outdoors and the ladybugs love it and they come running. That's cool. Good on you, Kemet. Keep up your organic good work. What's Ned, Ned Kelly? Ants suck. They farm scale. Yes, as well. Scale's a little uh, lumpy looking round warty thing that forms on the, the hypocotyls on the stems down, down belief on below. So if you see his little miniature, they're really small um, and the scale just... They sort of stay there. They're like uh, lichens. They look real weird. Then tiny. Yes. Fennel, herb, make a spray. Ladybugs will come. Oh, yeah. Hey, Genetic Memory Farms. Here you go, mate. Very nice to see you. And everyone in chat, I hope you're safe and stone. He says, that's good. Uh, banana farmer. More chitonase. Less white flays. <laughs> More chitinase, less white flays. <laughs> chitinase. Chitinase is an enzyme. And I know it's an enzyme because the last three letters are ASE. And that means it's an enzyme for the things beneath, before the ASE. So that's the enzyme for chitinase. Uh, all right, back to microbes. It's a microbe. It's an open topic too, everybody. Um, if you've got questions, please ask them. And I just started out on microbes and I was talking about the beneficials that are on each area of the cannabis plant. And I just showed some experiments that I'd done. And now into the third slide. It's already nearly 25 minutes in. I know, that's right, showed ants, fungicides, pesticides. Now I get back to it, see what the third slide is. I love microbes, they're so beneficial. If you use them in the right way, you can just thrive. And humans as well. All right, that's the that's a substrate. How to make a substrate. Plants have two immune systems, both relate to microbes. So they've got a systemic acquired, an SAR immune system, and then they got an innate, an SIN. So the systemic acquired is when, oh, this isn't very good. So it's, make sure I get this right, the systemic acquired, that's when they acquire it. So that means when there's suffix biting on the leaves and then they'll send their internal, once it'll look like an aphid. It's an aphid is a, a cell sucker. So it will get in and vector out of the phloem and try and get the sweet stuff out of the phloem and the leaves and phloem is the vascular bundle which transports the liquid through the 
pole up and down in the plant where the xylem is only more so one way, not unidirectional. The systemic acquired resistance is when the insect bites it and it systemically goes inside of the plant and then it travels through the plant and then it'll go to the other different areas of the plant. So it might be through the phloem, like through that, and it'll go through pretty fast because the saps move through at a rate of, uh, what's the rate again? A meter or three feet every five or six hours. So they go through pretty fast. That's if, you've, if things are working well. And then it'll go through the plant. It'll activate its immune system through its pathways and that will start and give a resistance into the plant species that it has. It'll also tell other plants what's going on through allelopathy and they'll warn them. So if you've got one plant with a problem, there's a high chance other plants very close to it will get the same thing because they'll warn it and the plant will go into that same fright phase through its gene pattern. The medical cannabis plants have about 35,000 genes. So they go and activate the right genes in their pathways and then they can activate their immune system. And the systemic innate is when it's come through the air, when it's a, through silicic acid, abscisic acid, germosinic acid, that's a way that you can do it without using uh, microbes. Trichoderma induced resistance. This one, yeah, they put trichoderma on it and that's how they induced it this way. It's primed, prime genes, that's what I have. So priming your plants gives prime genes, means that they're primed and they're ready to act. So it's similar. It's not like a ploidy thing because ploidy is a bit different. But having prime genes, it means that they've, the right ones have been trained to sit there and guard. So when a problem might arise, bang, it happens real fast and it activates the pathways. We need some pathways to start talking about what genes are getting enhanced. Um, all right, I'll stop on that one just in case there's some questions on it. Monty, g'day, Monty. How are you going? Get some fraz in your mix. Uh, yes, insect fraz is the insect, like droppings, I suppose, and it's got a lot of microbes in it, and it triggers these types of events, and it works very well in flowering too because of the beneficial microbes that come out of it. Thanks, Banana Farmer. Keep up your good organic growing, mate. We'll be back and see what another slide is. What's he got? What's he got? I got everything, Nana. It's just prevention for me. Yes, that's right. And if you can get your good IPMs happening, your, your integrated pest management, your systems will be smooth. Like, for instance, you know you're coming up to springtime and summer, autumn, winter, and spring when everything's going to blossom and pollen's going to fly and all that sort of stuff, you go, wow, maybe I should just do a round of uh, locusts might come this year. So I might get out and do some um, Bavaria bassiana inductions or um, something of the like, you know. So it's really pays to think ahead if you want good prevention, like Aussie Auto is suggesting if you're on your mate. All right, next to... We'll share screen, see what else comes up. Microbes, hopefully it's related to medical cannabis. It's not, I'll skin past it. So I got a lot of stuff. Microbes, I love them. Plants have two immune systems, yes. Innate immune is activated by rhizobacteria, which are recruited from soil microbes. It can be activated from anywhere. But that's what this says here. See, oh, oh, there you go. These are all the different ways it can be activated. See, through the air, through the phylosphere, which is that area above the soil. The rhizosphere is below the soil, which is directly just surrounds the roots. Uh, endophytic microbes, so endophytes, so they're, they're ones that live inside of it. So they can activate it as well. So if you've got your beneficials, you can also activate the immune system using beneficials. Rhizosphere, yep, and soil microbiome. So all those things help promote good organic growing. Pathogens, oh, this is a bit of a breakdown. There's three different styles, your necrotroph, biotroph, and hemibiotroph. Uh, the, in the first one, the cells, they kill it and consume it. In the next one, this, the host tissue will kill it from slowly. 
so it'll activate it and it'll slowly surround so what it does it's oh, what's that word called where it um it kills the cells instantly necrosis i think necrosis necrotic cell where it forms so the host will be say that white dot and all the way around it it'll start activating all the cells here and it'll kill them so it can't spread anymore that's what biotroph is and hemibiotroph is a mix of both no oh rad here we go a bit of uh gene response activation of transcriptional regulators second time first time when you inoculate it it'll go through and it'll turn the gene system off but activate it and get it ready once it goes systemically through the plant it'll form a bit of a memory so it'll go through the rna because it'll transcribe the signals and then into rna message rna and translates it back into message rna and forms the proteins and those proteins go on and they can form your systemic acquired resistance and if you do it well enough it might code your genes as well and that's when you'll have prime genes for your progeny and that's what i've got plant microbe association so plants have a very close relationship with microbes microbes partner with plants as they evolve which they have as you know it's only these last 150 years that they're trying to change our growing techniques and say they're better microbes are present all around the plant and in the air everywhere uh what's something that's new depending on the impact of microbes can be categorized as a pathogen plant growth promoting bacteria or commensal so they're the three different types you've got harmful your beneficial and your neutrals so your harmfuls are still a lot that's there, but you don't activate them because the plant's system is not, its immune system's high enough and its resistances are high. So that's generally what good soil has. Plants depend upon their microbial partners for many functions. Yes, they do. Uh, soil in the home has a large number. Yeah, a gram of microbes has 10 billion cells. Sorry, I said 1 billion before. So it's a lot. Prokaryotes, there's eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Prokaryote is a single cell organism, which means it just it looks like a uh, tic-tac. You know, it's shaped like a tic-tac. The first half of it is it's all its little organelles to function, and the last half of it, in most of them, or probably in a lot of them, 99% of the bacteria hasn't um, been found or um, plated yet or DNA coded yet uh, because they can't. It's very hard to reproduce because most of them are symbiotic. So they've, the last half of it is their endophyte, is their um, endophyte. It's reproductive little budding in the first half of their tic-tac, which is a little prokaryotic cell, is their organelles. And the second half is their reproductive cell. It's So when they die off, the second half of it can reproduce under its perfect conditions. That's why bacteria is everywhere unless you sterilize things up to 10 billion cells 10 million cells of fungi are in a gram of soil and you've got viruses as well there's all other organisms like algae protists and nematodes soil is a complex organism home to a large proportion of biodiversity uh, important terms no we don't really want to go through this is too a bit too detailed look on the right there you go the rise of Rhizoplane, right next to it, the root, where the cells are, and the rhizosphere, it's just that little smidgen around it. That'll do. The plant microbial relationships. So in the cell, that's too detailed. Endophytes live inside of the cells, inside of the cells, inside of the plants. And rhizosphere microbes, yeah, good on, this isn't very helpful. Plant grow PGP bees plant growth promoting bacteria these are the beneficials so a field grown no, microorganism no, association with these microbes with terrestrial planes which is the soil exist since the earliest colonizing of land plants okay we don't want a history lesson extracellular pgpr okay so there are on the outsides and they're ones like your azos and azos are really good for your nitrificating bacteria. They pull nitrogen out of the air and use uh, oxygen as electron acceptor 
and they convert that to nitrogen molecules. And that will mineralize it up. So when they'll pass on, they'll have all these nitrogen inside of them. And you can use that nitrogen, it can be broken down by other microbes and turn into available form for the plant's roots. Bacillus and Pseudomonas, Pseudomonas does it as well. It's got some nitrifying bacteria. Bacillus, actually, it's good for a um, bit phosphorus, solubilizing bacteria. And specifically, subtilis, Bacillus subtilis. Um, just sell it at PGPR. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Bradia rhizobium, that's a also a um, nitrifying bacteria. And this isn't with cannabis. Rhizobium is a species that forms root nodules in legumes that cannabis doesn't have. Plant roots and PGO interactions. They, the root at two dates, put out organic acids in the form of protons, the hydrogen H pluses, and that interacts with microbes because they want that, and they'll exchange a molecule with that, and that's how the plants get fed. Plant hormones produce PGPRs as well, plant growth promoting rises other signals. Okay, good. The root exudates. Okay. Plants secrete several molecules, compounds, and microbial growth for the rhizosphere. Root exudates comprised of organic compounds with low molecular weight, sugars, amino acids, organic acids, secondary metabolites like flavonoids and terpenes, high molecular weight compounds like proteins and polysaccharides. So this is what comes out of the plant's roots. So it's sitting there and once it's in its to communicate with microbes, this is how it works and exchange different meta, um, metabolic practices. It extracts specific microbes to the rhizosphere and directly re regulate the microbial interactions in the rhizosphere. Depending upon the composition of the root ex exudates, microbe type and number varies in the rhizosphere. So you can get all different types of actions. It depends on if you haven't got all these beneficials there, if you've got a lot of non-nitrifying ones, um, you know, ones that aren't going to be beneficial to the plant, that you're not going to get the action that you should be getting, the ge your genetic potential out of the plant. Uh, composition of the roots, good on you. Rhizobium communities may vary. Yes, it's just sort of saying, exudate composition vary with plant's age. Yeah, because it's at different ages, it requires different molecules that it puts out, and therefore it's going to ask for different things. So different microbes are going to be associated with that. Uh, they can mediate positive and negative interactions. So positive interactions might be like symbosis, the mycorrhiza, or the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, recruitments of inductions and defense responses, and the reductions of infection susceptibility. Because have they the so many there, there's no chance in it, they can guard against it, they will prime the genes from being there. So, so many positive things. Negative interactions like parasitism, yeah, allelopathy. That's where the plants speak to each other. That's bad. So once it gets something at plants, sometimes it thinks, oh, this is so bad, and it'll send out the allelopathy signal, and bang, the next plant gets it, and you see it's wilting and carrying on. Not good, friend. Phytohormones from PGPR, no. No, they just, if you get the right ones, did you know even like, uh, what's that one I was just going to say? Gibrellins is from fibrins gibrellins. That's the species it comes from. So gibrellic acid you can get from a microbe, and that's how they first got it. A lot of these things do come from microbes in tissue culture. Phytohormones, yep. Other signals from phytohormones, very good. Mechanisms of action, direct plant growth promotion. So from having them in your cycle in your biosphere, you're going to facilitate resource acquisitions like nitrogen fixation, phosphate solubilization, cytophores production, and sequestering of iron. So all these things the microbes will do for the plant and you don't need to give it anything. And then it'll also modulate, so it'll regulate the phytohormone levels. So from Oxins, your cytokinins, your brellins, and ethylene, these microbes will help regulate it. So if it gets a bit high, the microbes will do release certain things and adopt certain practices to bring it back to neutral. 
and some indirect plant promotion are antibiotic production, eulytic enzymes, induced systemic resistance, competition, ethylene regulation. There you go. That's not much. They just benefit a lot. Nitrogen fix. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to stop this. Let's see if anyone's got any questions. Went on for a bit there. Uh, cheers, Fraz. Um, got some Fraz. There's Monty. I remember seeing him. I've got everything. I've got a kilo. Jeff, I just turn some pumps. Very good, Jeff. Uh, no real questions. Oh, hang on. What's the autos? None of you are taking home. Okay. Someone talking internally. That's good. I really like you guys talking internally. It's nice to have a nice community. No drama here. No talking about other people. We just want to talk about the plant. We've all got our own individual problems and so does everyone else. Uh, growing with part-time planting. Here you go, mate. It's a bit of an open topic today on microbes. I'm going to rename this one. It's been talking. Oh, it's 41 minutes. We're nearly close to there. Close to finish. Is all those cloudscape, cloudscape Mysterio? How are you, mate? Aussie Jeffro. Nice to see you, Aussie Jeffro. Always a pleasure listening in. Thank you for the nice words. Miss you, Flip. I gotta go. One, have a great weekend. See you, Matt. Have a good weekend yourself. Thank you for dropping in. Kemet, hit the like. Okay, thank you. Peace support, Kemet. I'm going to get back to sharing a few more microbes. Uh, Ned Kelly, where's... Uh, okay, share screen. Lots of gibralic acid if you want perms. Uh, all right. I'm sharing one, two, this one. Nitrogen fixation, I'm not going to go into the process of nitrogen fixation, how they produce their nitrogen A's. See the last three words? A's means it's an enzyme for nitrogen. Non-symbiotic, they're the ones that we want in cannabis. So we want the non-symbiotic ones. So you're looking for your bacillus. No, that's not really uh, for nitrogen. That's for uh, phosphate. Azo is a nitrogen. They need O2 for their growth. Uh, yeah, so cyanobacteria, there's three types of cyanobacteria. The one I use is platensis, Atherospiro platensis. And there's Bagian rhizobium. It's another species of non-symbiotic ones. Anabana, that's, cy oh, yeah, that's cyanobacteria, nostric. I don't use either of them. Be careful when you're using it because I'd only recommend using Anabana um, produces toxins, mycotoxins that come off it, and it's not good. That's the blue-green algae. That's It's formerly called, it used to be called the green algae, and they found out that it's not a uh, eukaryotic cell. It's a prokaryotic cell, so they had to name it a bacteria because that's what bacteria are, they're prokaryotic cells. So, um, yeah, the cyanobet. Only if you're going to use your cyanobacteria, use your uh, Atherospiro. There's three from that genus, and I use the species Platensis. Very beneficial. Symbiotic. Well, we don't no, not talk about that because it's to do with the root nodules, which is not cannabis. We don't have them in cannabis, which is rhizobia. That's cool, though. Phosphate solubilizing bacteria. So this is the same way. It'll just solubilize your bacteria and make it more available to plants. So at the top, phosphates are insoluble. Phosphates are in insoluble form and are not usable by plants. Rock phosphates, aluminium phosphates, and tricalcium phosphates are the ones like ex examples. Uh, plants use phosphates in mono or dibasic form, soluble. So they have these two forms of its H2P, H2P204 and H2PO42 minus. So there's uh, ortho primary and ortho secondary phosphates that the plants uptake in those two forms. So unless it's in those two forms, plants won't recognize it. Uh, PGPR mineralizes organic and inorganic phosphates. 
That's what the solubilizing bacteria does. It utilizes sugar from root exudates and produces organic acids, which help in the solubilization of the inorganic phosphates. They produce, they also produce extracellular enzymes like phytase or phosphatase. So the phosphatase, as you know, last three, it's an enzyme, it breaks down phosphate. Phytohormone production. No, not getting the hormones, that was the other week. The cytophores, no, we won't even talk about. They're just chelators. So they sequester iron in the rhizosphere, thereby reducing the availability of iron for pathogens. So there's a lot of ferric and ferrous producing, um, needing bacteria, and they're just on the next scale under to breaking down. So once it goes down from your nitrogen, it'll go into your iron. So it just goes, they can use oxygen to as an electron acceptor. So it's really, really close. So all the iron producing bacteria is sitting right there, ready to go. So cytophores just help with that. Indirect mechanisms. Uh, no, I don't want to talk about this a bit. I think we're getting a bit too technical. Energy systemic reducers, ethylene production. It's sort of covered them before. All PGRs do not utilize the same mechanism. Yes. All plant growth promoting bacteria don't use the same mechanisms. So that's why you have the diversity and many different gene, um, species can really, really help. Uh, commercial considerations. So selection of the appropriate biological activity. Why do you want it? You know, are you trying to do IPM? Are you trying to do a seasonal thing? Are you trying to kill uh, fungus gnats that are always coming in my substrates? Endophytic versus free living. You have to ask yourself, do you want the ones that live inside or do you want the ones that live outside, which are ecto, ectophytes, endos and ectos. Um, east to prepare. Oh, highly storage. Optim okay, that'll do. Summary. Mechanism of actions of plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Sure, I don't want to summarise. I've just talked about it. Uh, resources and conditions that govern microbial growth. So this will get a bit more technical into it because this is the best book. If you are into microbes, there's a 15th edition now too, by the way. It's the Brock's Book of Microorganisms. It is the best. One of my microbiology teachers, she said ages ago, it's, if you want to really get into it, and I thought, yeah, righto, it might be all right, but it's not all right. It's brilliant. Most of the literature written is from Brock's book, and if you quote Brock's book in with micro, microbiologists, they all know about it. And get the 15th edition because it's got some of the latest stuff in it. I've got 15. Um, I'll better stop sharing you. This is going to get pretty technical. Let's see what's going on. Anyone's any questions related? So, uh, scroll up with you. Uh, I remember that one. Chibrelic. Cool skate. What's the who wants herms? Uh, yeah. A hemp farmer for seed production loves herms. A hemp farmer for seed production. Oh, yeah. Yes. Good point. That's right. They do, mate. Because how are they going to get their hemp seeds? So they want to produce that. I'll scroll down a bit. Zaya the Aussie. How you going, Zaya the Aussie? Oi, 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 says. G'day, g'day, g'day. Uh, Ziggy D. G'day, Ziggy D. Nice to see you. It's a microbes talk today. So if you've got any micro questions related to medical cannabis, drop them in the chat. I might be able to show you some slides to help shed some light on that question. Uh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't getting stuck. Door is nice. Nice. Reading down. Good morning. Calcium change my name tomorrow. Yeah, no more pain. Okay. All right. Back to the microbes. You know, 49 minutes here. I hope you're liking it. I love microbes. They rule. Microbes rule. That's why I write different places. You'll see a little tag. Microbes rule because they do. Um, this is going to get pretty. So there are different resources. So the plant, the microbes need different things to reproduce. So there's the amount of carbon, nitrogen, and other macronutrients they need for their functioning, macro and micros. And they need to know if they're going to get where they're going to get their oxygen from. Is it going to be from the air or is it just going to be once the oxygen in the air is gone, it'll go to the 
nitrate or to the sulfate or to the iron. So you don't want it to start breaking down these things, especially iron, because that means you're going to get the iron like before and you want some of your um, cytophores. Inorganic electron donors is once it's run out of oxygen, it'll run into this if it's an oxygen related microbe. Remember you get anaerobes and anoxics ones, anoxics in between oxygen and anaerobe like your sulfate and your iron and it needs the right conditions so that's what it needs to reproduce and then in the right conditions so as it needs temperature needs water it needs the right ph it needs the right oxygen is it bright or dark and is it fresh water or salt water so once you've got those conditions met it can be reduced oh this is rad i can't i'm stoked this came up look at this everyone this is really cool so this shows you in the soil particle, you don't want them more than half an inch or 12 millimetres across. So if you get them, break them. Because inside of here, you can see the stratified layers of oxygen. So out in the air, we've got 20.95% oxygen. So that's what you get on the outside. Once it goes in here a bit, depending on the type of substance that's your structure of your soil particle, if it's how clay you have in it, if you've got a lot of clay, there's a high chance or really is it, there will be a massive chance that it's anaerobic in the middle. So if I ever see anything above 12 mil or half an inch, I'll just push my fingers through it just to make sure to eliminate the pro pro probability of facultating, you know, anaerobes. Because once they come in, they're bad. They're, they've got all the harmful things that destroy things, your bad E. coli, your... Uh, there's just many different ones. I was trying to think of ones. But yeah, this is really, really cool. So it goes, that really right. Guides to Senate know how to kill the microbes. He's all know how to do that. Which is one? C6, H12. That's, yeah, that's glucose, radox tower. Oh, so this is the reduction of the different minerals from the different amounts of oxygen it has and its potential. So right down here, where it's in the plus stage, oxygen's easily, which is oxygen's the best. Actually, I don't want, you probably don't want me to go into all of this. It's pretty technical. The tables provide the useful framework for classifying the nutritional needs for individual microbes. Oh yeah. So there's heaps of different classifieds, chemosynthetic, so chemical and it's synthetic, organotroph. Then you've got the litho, which is rock, heterotroph. Hetero means it can be of different, for a few different types. So it's not a homo, it's a hetero. It, this gets pretty full on. I reckon these, um, see, all of those things. Oh, I didn't say organo, plant derived. Or, This is their pathways on how they produce energy. So how they produce their ATP, which is the currents of the energy. And I'm not going to go into that because I reckon you just don't want to. It's a bit probably boring. General trends in proportions of gene representation in genomes in four prokaryotic pro lifestyles. This just tells you a little bit about the difference, how they use their oh, amino acids, their carbon dioxide, their energy requirements and the inorganics inside of them. This is a really good course. This is, uh, what was this one? Bio, um, environmental biotechnology. Went extensively into it. This is how they double. They can double very, very fast. See how it's doubling every 20 minutes? So it'll just bud again. It'll divide. It'll divide. And in roughly uh, 48 hours, oh, good. In 48 hours, there's enough. Oh, I said it would go around the earth. It would cover the earth 4,000 times. Okay. There you go. Exponentially doubling. Their cat so your meta metabolism is made up of a catabolism and an anabolism. So the catabolism makes the energy and the anabolism uses that energy for the metabolism. 
uh, the energy requirements for different amounts of their chemicals. So it's, this isn't really related to medical cannabis. Following figures, this is how they break down. So they'll be on the surface and the nit nitrate and the sulfate, and as it goes deeper, it will start going to manganese and iron, then methanogenesis, methane, preparation of the soil dilution. Uh, this is how to count your microbes. It she doesn't like me talking about that. Culturability determined as percents of cultural bull bacteria. Yeah, see over here? This is the amount they've, they've been able to culture on the planet so far. So 0 0.0001 to, so 0 0.1 of a percent of microbes in the ocean, they've been able to culture. So 99.9% .9 of the ocean microbes, don't know what they are, as per science on today's date. This course was new uh, 2020. Fresh water and all those ones down there, you can see. So it's activated sludge is the reason why they've gone to that because that's where our wastewater it goes into. And they've got a really, you, you need the right microbes in that to break down the right s sediments. So that's why they have a lot of different holding tanks because in one holding tank, you'll have your clostridium and then you'll go to another holding tank and you'll have other beneficials that will break down and do that part. Then it'll, then you'll, the sludge gets, the bottom bit gets um, sucked out and they keep doing their thing and it's all safe because microbes make things safe. I'll slowly bring it all back to normal again. That's another, th this gets into, oh, here you go. What's culturable on the planet? So there's not many culturable. Microbial communities from environmental systems. What to analyze and how to analyze the communities. So to do that's called a mesogenomic study. If you wanted to study all the, the everything. So you take your scoop out of your soil and you put it into your the analyzer, probably a GC uh, gas chromometry mass spectrum machine, and you would, or a, what's the other one? Doesn't matter. And it would give you a full breakdown of the millions and millions of different species that you have inside of it. And that's called a metagenomic study. And they're cool. Specific microbial methods. No, isolation of pure cultures. Uh, that's more, you know, this is out of pure culture. Isolation of anaerobic fixing bacteria from your soil. Uh, she doesn't like me talking about that. It's, it's so unfortunate, I eh, because it's so fun to do. We're getting into a bit of probable number. This is just a serial dilution. You can count them. So this isn't anything new. So again, it's in Brock's book, about 12th edition. Anyway, you just don't want to know about that. Alternative methods to pure... Uh, some enrichment cultures, oh, this is getting before, this is how to make it. These are different types of, I'm not going to talk about that. Righto, gone on enough. Let's see if there's any questions on this beautiful topic today on microbes in medical cannabis. Let's scroll up a bit. Uh, nice to see us chatting amongst each other. That's good. I promote Nice, nice community. Might be going to get room casting some molasses tea tomorrow. All right. Oh, here we go. J. J. Thomas P. If you have molasses, would you use until harvest, or do you stop feeding close to finish? Uh, yes, you have to definitely stop feeding close to finish, mate. Even before that, because it's going to that's going to be one of your electron acceptors for your it's, it's sugar. So it's one of your pathways will be ticked for the microbes so they can get their glucose and their sucrose and all those types of things that they need out of that molecule. So um, you have, must stop it prior to harvest. Otherwise, you're going to get their microbes are still going to keep reproducing and they're still going to get doing all of these actions that we've gone through already. Great question for this topic because that's, yeah, if you've watched the whole show, which you just kind of did, that would help you out, mate. Because you'd understand now exactly why, when you want to stop them. Because the microbes still do their processes whenever they're in the right conditions. The right areas, they're given the right, remember that, that page where it says the right macro and micronutrients and temperature and things? So if you've got your molasses, that's going to stimulate that to get it going more. 
So yeah, stop it. If you've got a day 60 cultivar, stop at day 40. Might have a couple, right? Next one, scrolling down. Put on his chat in there if we want him. JT Thomas, can you actually get good harvest if I started an auto in two weeks? Can I actually get a good harvest if I started an auto in two weeks? Yeah, mate. Oh, because the solstice is changing, he's wondering can he get a good. Well, the ruderalis doesn't rely on the seasonals. They just rely on length of time. So all that that means is you just got, might get a shorter plant than a longer than a larger plant. So, but the answer is yes. And the thing is too, coming into if you're in the southern hemisphere, it'll be coming into winter. So you really want to watch the fungal. So you want to make sure that your genetics has fungal resistance in it, systemic acquired or induced, like mine does, and then you'll have no worries. Question, mate. We better get some quick. All right. Uh, I can get some in my day. Hey, sunshine. Nice to see you, sunshine. Hope you're doing well. Medicated TV. G'day, g'day. Good to see some actually researching, educating. It's your boy. Okay. Thanks for your nice words, mate. It's every week I do this. I've been doing it for a while now. I study at university, uh, mostly related to medical cannabis. I study plant science, soil science, and microbiology. It's fantastic. Fredscape. So do I know this guy because his voice is calming from my anxiety. Legit. Hey, sweet. Nice words. Wow, you can... Get everything at the same time, mate. And I don't think you know me. <laughs> Medicated TV. I don't know. You're beautiful. Oh, jeez. Okay. Cheers, bro. Yeah, it's nice. Someone giving us facts about growing and bro science. Good on you, Saya. Yeah, that's why I started studying, mate, was because there was so much out there and I was just getting confused. Can you do this? Can't you? Well, I'm going to learn and just put it to a test. So when I was in BC, I lived in Canada for five years. I did... Heaps of experiments. Can you do this? Can you do that? What's the go with this? Can you cut this and it does that? What pathways are activated? And it was just legendary. So from those five years experience over there, plus now my uni stuff, it's just terrific. I like to answer a lot of... We'll try to answer some plant, some questions and help out. Uh -huh. Okay, escape. Um, so hot outside, yes it is, 37, it's crazy, says Monty, yep. Uh, Monty, I read that, okay, um, yes, very interesting, thank you, all right, good, excellent, I helped you, nice work, thanks J, Thomas P, need some more, hey, Cloudscape, uh, I want to, hey, there's Stony Creek. How are you, Stony Creek? Today's a microbes topic um, in medical cannabis. So is there anything related? Um, I've pretty much been through a lot. But ask your questions, please. And I'll see if I can show some slides to enlighten the answer. Cold as. Uh, talking about the weather. Yes, weather's not good. J. Thomas P. Do strains need to be related to cross them? No. That's how they made your auto variety. They crossed a ruderalis with a whatever, with a sativa or indica. So there's, a there's three main species that come out of that, and you can pretty much interrelate them. Crossing a, a hemp plant is a little bit different, but it still can be done. I've done it too. But they all... That's where you get the word hybrid when they're all interacted when they've crossed them so much they just call them hybrids so that's what that is and i'd suggest yeah getting the ones that you like and starting playing around with the ones that you like and then you can cross them and then you'll start to bring out different terpene profiles different flavonoid profiles that your body might adopt more quick more better because they're the ones that are already agreed with your body to start with that's the question mate uh -huh, medicated spot on Zaya. Very good, Ben. Is it all right? Anything? 
So is there anything else to show with the microbes? It gets into the, I can't go into the how we make them and stuff. Some enrichment cultures, no, I can skip that. Existence of organisms that required degradation potential. No, availability, no. Contaminants can serve as an electron donor. Yes, but that's in sludges and things. Availability of nutrients, macro and micro. I suppose I can show that. All right, I'll show you this. Oh, here we go. Vin, medicated, depending if you're indoor, outdoor for that. If you grow indoor, they love winter indoors. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's Jeff say? Is there a microbe or bacteria that enhances trichome production? Good question. The short answer is no, because to activate that pathway, you need to have the, where is it? Oh, we've gone on a bit more. Remember a few weeks ago, I showed the pathways to trichome production, where it goes down, it starts off with the J1 gene, then it goes into the MIB gene, and then it goes down into another gene, and then it's it branches. So it'll go into a defense proteins, or it'll go into trichome proteins. So defense, defense will be microbe interrelated, and then if you go the other way, it can be triggered by other things like jasmonic acid, salicylic acid, uh, things like that. So to answer that question, it's all microbes that trigger it. So if you want to grow that, this is what I'm talking, this is the question that I'm answering. So if you want to grow with sterile conditions, you're going to get, it's going to have to be very sterile or you're going to have problems. And that's why these big LPs are having big problems, license, big licensed producers and they're going under because they're trying to keep things too sterile, too clean. And things are going south because once one bad pathogen gets in, you've seen how quickly it can reproduce. What was it? 4,000 times it can, in 48 hours it can circle the earth in its right conditions. So it just reproduces so fast it takes over. So it's, yeah, good luck to them. That's why they've got to stick to organics and not to what everybody else is marketing and telling everybody to do. It gets back to the root tradition of what, how our forefathers, how our people in 1700 and before that grew. They grew with bacteria, beneficial bacteria. They didn't grow with giving it things, spraying it with stuff for bottle feeding it with nutrients because it doesn't allow all these pathways to be activated and you're going to end up with a less of a genetic outcome if it's if it reaches the outcome that's why people have to spray to finish their plants these days no just install resistance into it or get um genetics that have have this these genes installed into them that have prime genes all right hope that helps jeff like hey monty oh, that's something for monty uh, stone Dave, I'm thinking. Okay, it's Dave too. Here we go. What's this one? Medicated TV says, Are you able to get auto flower buds without being airy? The airy thing is, yeah, put it indoors, mate, and raise your CO2. Then you get your big chunkers. It's um, a predominant CO2 thing because for the plant to grow, it needs 19 essential elements. Three of them come from the air, which are C, H and O, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And out of that, they make up 95% of the plant's requirements, nutritional requirements. So if you've got them outside, the best it can do is with 400 ppm of CO2. So it does good, but it tends to be airy. But if you put it inside with the same con similar conditions, even in the greenhouse, but bump up the CO2, you'll find that's when you get your big chunkers. That's from my experience, I've done that. Um, scroll down. Irish CC, great ways on how to increase microbial life. CC, great ways. I think he's asking, what are some great ways to increase microbial life? Good on you, good question, Monty. Some ways to increase microbial life are organics uh, to start with and then it comes down to soil that organic matter so what type of organic matter you're putting in there and you want to have a like manure has a lot of good beneficial bacteria in there so that'll just kick it off and then you'll do your worm castings which is got and your leachette 
like I showed that chart before on that experiment that I did over a month with leachette from worm castings and the, what type of outcomes I was getting from it. You'll also use organic compost. Um, and yeah, really it's your soil organic matter, you want it high. Because if it's low, that means there's nothing for the microbes to feed on. So by doing that test and maintaining a good soil organic matter level, which is approximately one or 2% in the substrate, that will keep them thriving. And you want those things that I showed earlier on the beneficials that, how 10, um, that chart, that slide I pulled up before on what they require, the nutritional requirements for microbes, and then give that to them, which is your soil organic matter and things for them to break down to turn into other things like oxygen is definitely one. So they must have oxygen. So don't make compost piles more than two feet thick unless you turn it often because it will develop anaerobic activity in the middle of it and you don't want to produce them. You want to be producing aerobic bacteria, which are beneficials. Uh, some other way, great ways. They always need water to keep their life cycle reproducing. So you don't want to let it go dry. So a uh, great way to say a good compost heap would have between 60 and 80 percent humidity or water activity, water level, or the dry worm castings when you finish them, they have 30 percent. So you don't want it too wet at all to harbour them sitting there. Uh, and what other good ways? That's a, that's a good organic way of doing it without buying or putting any beneficials into your substrates and if you do put beneficials into your substrates reuse it just reuse your substrates if you don't have to reuse it straight away you can get out you put it in the water you can float all your aeration things out scoop them off your soil will sink and then you can aerate your soil out and um yeah use it in six months maybe let it enrich itself again good question monty keep up the good organic work mate Dave says, yes, I think when you do think a good time to drop. Yes, I think I'm, when do you think is a good time to drop some auto beans? Whenever you want, mate, whenever you need. Because it goes on, doesn't matter about the periodic cycle of the, the seasons. It just goes on length of time with the autos. So put them whenever you want. Probably you have to consider though, when they're finishing. Because if they're finishing in three months' time, that'll be finishing, you know, it could be possibly winter if you're in the southern hemisphere. But in the south, in the northern hemisphere, it'll be midsummer, so it might be perfect. So you just have to consider different areas where you're going. What's that thing? Someone just dropped five bucks. Thank you for that support. While we're on that, there's a little button down the bottom which that person hit. Thank you. Medicated TV, thank you for that. Um, it's to share some money like that or some, if you want to sign up, like a few people have, thank you for that. They still haven't wanted me to mention their name, so I won't. And that's on the subscription. It's five bucks for thank you or eight dollars, depends where you are. And next one down to 80 is for my unreleased lectures, some of them. The next one's a hundred dollars is for a one-off call and maybe a gift I've made. And the third one is the fourth one's three hundred dollars, and that's for a company or a person going through possible ongoing problems, and they need my professional opinion as much as a professional opinion I can give. Relay that I'm not a doctor, but I can help in different areas. So thank you for that, medicated TV, Monty. Okay. Oh, how about? Okay, you can ask Monty, I won't answer that. When is Medicaid TV back on the air, Irish? Asks Nick S. Medicaid TV, when are you coming back, mate? You got people asking for you. Have you heard of, all right. Uh, I was gonna start, okay. Um, hey, good stuff. Thanks, CC. I'm on the right path then. It's reassuring, mate. Good on you, Jeff. Thanks for your nice words too. Appreciate it. Remember, I've still given you a, um, a friend request on Zoom. Supreme great. Welcome. Supreme great. Yes, it's been a big microbe session, this one. 
microbes in medical cannabis very well explained i hope this does not get uh demonetized because it's um been quite a good one pretty much gone through the whole thing in an hour you just listen back to it you think wow you have a good understanding of i th what's medicated tv i think i went too many uh i need more co2 than the planet has that uh, yeah yeah try it out mate it'll work uh monty in a greenhouse you could give it some extra oh that was answering someone else's question i think uh irish i know my wife does okay michelle stony creek haha <laughs> banana medicated subscribed and liked thank you thanks for your subscription mate appreciate it cloud state love your work good on you thank you cloudscape i try i try it's very hard being here here's a question mark what about if you're layering your compost like a cake you could then pile it up higher and not have to turn it as often yes there's a few ways to do that um the indoor method i-n-d-o-r-e is a very good one you can get uh enriched compost after three months there's a bangalore method there's i like the indoor and you only turn it three times and they layer it with manure green compost green compost is leaves twigs things like that so anything green which is going to get a lot of nitrogen out of it because if you put nitrogen out and break it down naturally it's going to get released in the oxygen it's going to get broken down and released back into as to die nitrogen in the atmosphere but if you put it under the compost heat it's going to get broken down and stays in there and it's beneficial so microbes can go then and use it and nitrogen is one of the key things um, like, um one of the molecules that not all uh microbes need so what was it again so what about laying your compost like a cake yes well i lay a mine like that as a cake too i put in uh compost i put in seven layers actually <laughs> sticks down the bottom oh i don't want to go into it all but maybe we can have a compost um session next time and i can go heavily into compost because i compost is the future mate that's where you'll get free substrates from and all you're doing is recycling helping the planet at the same time it's definitely a win-win to compost and to put anything all your vegetable scraps all that type of thing throw them into a bucket or throw them into a pile even a heap outside you know that's not going to hurt the neighbors and then you'll find it'll slowly break down and at the bottom of it you'll turn it after a month and you go wow what's all this black stuff well that's enriched highly humic and fulvic acid uh, high amount of soil organic matter the stuff that you want very just caned with microbes so that gets put into your substrate and you all of a sudden everything improves or you do a top dress of that and everything improves it's the best way if i've got fighting a problem i'll just do a top dress of some enriched humic acid soil organic matter something like that and um bang the microbes that are in there they'll get released and the ones will combat the problematic ones they'll hunt out it's a really quick fix. Organics is rad. Good on you, Monty. He medicated TV. I appreciate that, mate. I really do. Thank you for your help. Helping people to get medicated and dedicated for sure. And do it the right, the safe, right way. I've, it's only to do with legal practices on this show in the safe way. So that's what I promote. Organics for sure, because we can get it for free. We can make our own. Everyone wants us to spend money all the time. Wow, you don't need to. GMF, what do you reckon? S said, GMF says, save your water from cooking vegetables or starches and let it sit in a day or two. Huge microbial boom from compost heap or to break down root balls, etc. Oh, yeah. Yep. Did you? That's right. GMF knows his stuff. Uh, for making kombucha even, they used to start with vegetables. You just get, uh, I can't remember the type, and you just ferment it. And then the right ones pick up that environment and bang you're left with your oh, what is it again saccharomyces cerevisiae that's the yeast that comes out of it and uh uh what's the other one can't remember he'll probably name it <laughs> and that one and also from the starches you get that from um the 
rice. So your rice water, you'll drain the first bit of rice, make rice, and the first rinse when you rice it off of the water is high, high starches. That's all that white stuff. And then that's so beneficial for microbes to use as well. I've put, I've done cultures with that in the past with uh, rice, rice wash. I've actually got a few papers on that too, rice wash. Good suggestion then, GMF. Thanks for your words, mate. GMF, thanks for that. Would you also, Monty says, would that be also good to use on a worm farm? Yes. Yep. Worm farms are just the same as your compost. If anything, worms, worm farm is the same as the compost, but it's just got worms slithering through it instead of a high amount of microbes breaking it down. What's Tony say? I... MO, I don't know what that means. Autos should be utilised for harvest at hot summer, hot midsummer time for best growing, and they usually, when outdoors is starting, run out. Yes, yeah. If you want your full growth, it's going to be in summer. But you can start them, you know, in whenever. But you're just not going to get the maximum out of your plants. Good word, Stony. I'm trying to. You, what's Monty doing? I'm trying using them both my compost in my front yes substrate i like is 50 percent perlite uh 20 percent compost 20 percent vermicastings and 10 percent organic manure and your organic manure must be from sourced from a non-hormonal non-antibiotics uh, source for instance kangaroos <laughs> or rabbits um Medicated TV, I don't want to promote myself on your page. I'm back week after next. My editing team is sick. There you go to that person. No, you're not promoting it, mate. That's good. Someone asked a question about you before. When will you be back? And you've supported me, so I can support you too. I support those who support me. Keep up the good work. Oh, okay. That's to Medicated TV. GMF says something back to Monty. Thank you guys for keeping a nice community here. There's no swearing or you know carrying on, no name calling. It's just about the plant. It's the good stuff. Keep up your good work. These are all welcome. Banana farmer. Yes, Monty. Yep, talking within everybody else. Oh, here we go. Monty says, Do you see my recent vid on my compost pile? CC? No, I haven't. Sounds good, mate. Yeah, sounds really good. Hope you're watching that temperature. Remember if it gets, what do we want? Mesophile, mesophilic range is up to about 45 Celsius and then it goes into the thermophilic range into the 60s and that's what you want to get it up to to break down all the pathogens and bad and all the seeds and stuff and then it can drop back down. Monty knows all this stuff anyway. Hey, Ozzy Gunjaman, how you going, mate? Today's been a nice microbes uh, lecture. Really good in microbes in medical cannabis. Really, really good. It's just, yeah, I went into a lot. So um, if you want to really understand microbes, I could show some good slides earlier and discuss how they form, what's the going, why they do their thing, the safe practices for them, that sort of stuff. No worries. GMF says compost and mulch. Yeah, mulch. Mulch is the stuff that goes on the surface and must, not must, but I promote mulch using because it regulates temperature. I've done an actual video on why you should use mulch. It's It helps a lot. Just keep regulating. You can get fungal development underneath. You inoculate your mulch before you put it in. There's a few cool things you can do with mulch. For the win, yes, and you do win if you stick with compost and mulch and organics. You can win, but it is harder. It's a lot more work to do. This is the thing why a lot of people don't do it. It's easy to unscrew a bottle and pour or, you know, something like that. It's hard to mix and blend, make up layers of soil. You've got to keep taking your vegetable scraps out and putting them in, maybe turning them, monitoring the temperature of your piles, making sure they're not too damp in the middle, all this sort of thing. It's it's not easy, but it has way better. The What's it? The growth balance differential hypothesis. That's a really cool paper on why organics are, give a better outcome. Well, I'll keep going here. So, my stomach's growling. Can you hear it? Hey, Lene, good on you. Thanks for your knowledge. Thanks for your nice words. Stony Creek says, 
what's he say FRCC I don't know what that means homemade compost soils for the win the breakdown of access to goods happened so easily recently yeah yeah if you can really make it your own I even had an indoor compost um, vermi castings and it was fine because if it's good smelling let your nose know because good smelling it's supposed to smell like it's called the terpenes called geosmin g-e-o-s-m-i-n that's the terpene that you want from good natural earth smell so if you open your bucket open your door your lid whatever you've got your pile thing and it should smell like geosmin and then you know you're on the right track if it's if you've got some sort of a surgery or a toxic or an alcoholic or some sort of smell that's not good, turn your pile, make it thinner and monitor it. Raise the temperature, get some aeration into it. Uh, what's Jeff saying? Jeff said he's been using, I've been using the spent grain in large amounts, breaks down quickly and the worms go nuts. Yes, spent grains, great. All these sorts of organic inputs. Yep, and you're right, you're right. Your CN ratio, your carbon to nitrogen ratio has to be good because if you've got too much nitrogen, remember it's going to break down too fast. So you want about a 25 to 1 ratio of carbon to nitrogen of your, your dead things to your green things. Easiest way to put it. I need a couple of days off, says Monty. Yeah, mate, you've been working too hard. And it's blooming heat too. Jeez. Hope you're wearing a hat. PPE. Oh, wow, Vinny. Two bucks. Good on you, Vinny. Hey, mate. Thank you. Appreciate that. Really do. You haven't been asking any questions today either. I'm just throwing some support out. Good on you, mate. Sunshine says, bacterial microbes will break down soft matter while fungal pathogens will break down rocks, etc. Ah, well, you do have your chemolithotrophs in microbes, your bacteria, there is. And they're the your chemo, chemical, litho meaning rock. So you do get those types of bacteria. But in general, I suppose you could say that. And you get your lichens, which is more fungal dominant, that breaks down rock. Yeah. But there is benefit, like your PG, PGPRs, um, your post promoting plant growth, your PGPR bacteria. They're of your Bacillus subtilis, for instance, that will break down phosphate rock. So that's a, that's a, beneficial but it's good for you good for you i like your words mate good on your sunshine what's gmf say all different genuses lactobacillus plantarium etc and wild yeast that contain the phenolic off flavor gene which makes funky smells and flavors think sourdough bread ah yeah so what's that sort of relating to all the different genuses of lactose yep they give the funky smell of sourdough bread yeah like off milk with that's what's in milk a lot the lactose yep so yeah you want the nose the nose nose <laughs> oh wow vinnie vinnie's coming out with all the women look at that thanks vin good on you mate you have to um just really appreciate it keep up the good work thank you thank you thank you stony creek Home grow barley for mulch straw. Oh, yeah. He's a home grower head. That's the way. How's the beast, GMF? Uh, okay. Monty is. Yes. Monty has a lovely compost pile, says Sunshine. <laughs> J. Thomas can make lactobacillus every time you make rice, Monty. Oh, yeah. Yeah beneficials did you know that the actually lactobacillus in cannabis isn't the best those it's a bit of a debate but um my from my microbe studies they're not real symbiotic so uh those korean natural farmers that's cool every technique works but they're just not real symbiotic so if you want a big diversity of culture in your substrate which i do i don't use much of the lactose at all i might put if i'm doing culturing a tea I might put in a nip of milk just to get a di just the different diversity happening. Yes, I want to max. Monty says he wants to maximize microbial life because it's the future and only way to save ourselves from a bad future. 
Hey, hey, this bloke knows. That's right. Microbes rule. They do. If you can really dial it in, you've got no problems. Like, the, for instance, in the gut, there's a gut brain access. What's that? The, uh, oh, oh, what's that perineal nerve that that's connects to the brain from the gut? And that's to do with microbes that they're now discovering. And that's the old timers back in the day, the, they have different microbiomes different from ours and they don't get cancers. They don't get any problems like that. It's because our microbiome is different. Also, they did a metagenomic study from obese people and found that their microbes were different to a lot. They're very similar to each other who are obese. And yeah, so that's another microbe fascination. So they are. I won't go into it. One and a half hours. See, I like microbes. <laughs> Great place to be on this channel. So much real info and no bravado. Much, much excellent. Thank you, Vinny. That's what I really try for, mate. That's why I try and show as many slides as I can. So you know it's just not straight in my mouth. It's I'm just reading stuff that's I've learnt. GMF I at Monty. What's down to the bottom nearly? I add molasses at the end. Oh, yeah. JT Thomas says he adds molasses or they add molasses at the end to feed it lasts up a year. Yes, and you want to get non sulfur molasses if you can, mate. Uh, awesome, thanks. Has anybody, Sunshine asks, has anybody used baker's yeast on compost or soil? Uh, it doesn't work. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. There was um, a test that done on that a while ago, and that's what turned me away from it. It's not symbiotic, and it's actually oh no, what is it? It's in direct competition with a beneficial one in our medical cannabis that we use. It'll like they kill each other type thing. They use the same microbes, so they, they use the same minerals macro and micronutrients and that type of thing. No, I can't think of it. That was a while ago. I've got a, a slide on that though. We'd have to go way more in detail with microbes. But so I would not suggest it, mate, but someone might have tried it and their substrate might be different. So it might have worked for them. But personally, I wouldn't recommend it. What's GMF say? Uh, anything to support the community here, all UCC, just the science of nature. Yes, that's right. Science is what we share here, just science. And also our ways can change, like these techniques, like uh, the nutrient requirements has gone from 19, 16 in the 70s, and then they introduced nickel, and then it went to 17, and then it went up to 19. Then they took two out, in, that was in 2010, and then it came back to 17 with two floating. But in medical cannabis, it is 19. So, yeah, because science is evolving, we get different things, and it's great. So not one technique's the everything's changing. Hey, family falc leg. How you going, mate? Pineal gland, that's it. Thanks, Monty. Molasses versus one point. Wow. I don't do. Jeez. Yeah, try not to say. Coke's bad, mate. It drops. You've seen the pH of Coke? Whew. Uh, Monty says it too. Kills people, let alone plants. Yeah, mate. Yes. It's good for getting um, tarnish off your coins, as you use Coke for. Molasses and carbonated water would be better to use, Tazzy. Yes, it would. Carbonated water. Yes, it's got to add CO2 to your substrate. You don't really want it in that. Do you know your substrate, um, the air is 0.03 CO2, and in your substrates it's about 0.5. So you got to be careful there because it does raise... The amount that's how you test the substrate microbe diversity is co2 you want to see what they're respiring and then you'll know what your microbes are at what state they're in have i got them at a high state or they're a low state i keep mine i like to keep mine at about at least a 800 or 1000 ppm for my respiration rate of my microbes in the substrates which is quite high meaning that they're very active and doing what i want them to do this is great for um here we go. What's the GMF say? Yeast consumes sugar on a faster pathway than ethanol. It is not eat to not eat to not only eat faster, but also poison the environment for most other microbes. 
That is yeast superpower. So yeah, even GMF says don't use it. He knows he's uh, cooking stuff, that's for sure. Yep, thanks for that backup, mate. Appreciate that. It's banana farm, I love science. The science changes, yes. Court hormone usually claims humus does not exist in soil. Bullshit. Um, here we go. No, bullshit, see, that relates. <laughs> it does. I'll show you. I think I got a slide like summed up. Humic acid, because humic acid is so beneficial. It's humic acid has fulvic acid. It has humin in it. It has quite a lot of things. So here's a paper written not long ago um, about its role, and it's. I can go actually quite in detail about humic acid. I've done a few talks on that. It's. Um, I don't believe that one, and I'd like to see that. Actually, I don't want to see it because everybody has different inputs and that's really good. But from my understanding, it's um, there's many papers. It's Cornwall University claim humus does not exist in soil. Okay, well, that's cool. Because Well, science does change, like the statement says. Yeah. But mine, all right. Um, what do you say? So if it kills off any microbes, yeah, it won't promote them at all yeah I've, that's what the study says in mine it's there's one microbe that's saccharomyces cerevisiae, the yeast it's indirect competition and it's bad so if you want to promote your azos for instance it'll work against it so that's why i went oh i'm not yeah that yeast stuff it's full on stony creek says some washed and soaked seaweed i collect then dilute the rain water seems to be a good tea to feed in what do you reckon, CC? Some washed, well, the washed and soaked seaweed, it has a little bit of salt water in it and the salt, the sodium isn't really that good because you can build up sodium levels and yet that's called having a sodic soil. Um, so maybe if you get rid of the saltiness out of it, then dilute it in rainwater. Oh, he does. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, seems to be good to tea to feed. Yeah. Uh, seaweed has, the brown seaweed from the north has difference from the green seaweed you get in the south or actually maybe it's those regions are different wrong those regions are wrong. but there's two different green and brown seaweed and they both have different constituents in it that are beneficial there's a red algae there's a red seaweed too but they're great mate they've also they've got hormones in them there's heaps of stuff in them you could nearly um do a whole feed just with the seaweed it's terrific stuff excellent work you can even get it and store it you can mix it you can dry it out uh your seaweed and use it as an amendment. You can um, put it into a spray. You can leach at it and put it into a spray, dilute it that way. You can concentrate it by, I'm not going to say concentration method, but you can concentrate it. So, yeah, seaweed rad. Good on you, Stoney. You'd have a good, um, good week. Stoney, if you access, yes, seaweed, it's a winner. Sure is. Yes, cheers. Stoney says, all us Kiwis are pretty close to the beach. Uh, that's the way. Can you dig seaweed? All right. Monty asks, can you dig seaweed into your garden bed before season start too? Yes. Yes. That's right. The nitrogen that's in it won't be released into the atmosphere. It'll be contained in your, your soil. So it's really cool. Sunshine says to get a grant for research, you got to take corporate funding, and they want the results. They want that's modern science. Oh yeah, yeah, that's why I'm independent. It's the best way to be independent, mate. Do your own studies and experiments, and you don't have to do anything. But just remember, take notes because not taking notes makes that. That's what uh, MythBusters says. Scientific people, or the to be science related, you got to take notes. That's the only difference. All right. Get down. You can bury whole fish carcasses too. Oh, yes. Let me tell you about that one. Uh, a friend in BC, I was living on the property, actually. It was so fun playing with all the black bears. Um, they used to do that. They get all from the salmon runs each year. They get truckloads brought in, and they'd mix it with soil and what else was it? Sawdust. Was it? No, buck. 
I think bark. Oh, there was something woody. And they'd mix it with it and they'd let it ferment over like a year and just turn it with a tractor every now and then. And the bears used to love it. It was just so much fun. Every day I'd be out there playing with the bears. And um, but it's it's brilliant. The end result is terrific. It's your fish hy hydrolysate. It's something that I've would like to add to my program that I haven't got. Yeah, it's really good. Natural fish bone or fish meal. Yep, that's good for yep your calciums and stuff. Definitely, and your in your bone meal, it's got a lot of phosphorus because it's uh, DNA background of phosphorus. Exactly. See, so that's what separates a citizen scientist with someone who's a hobbyist. Yes, if we write it down or not. It says blazing that. Yes, very good. Blazing everyone. One hour forty. This is like a record. Wow. -ee. Well, any more questions? Because that's been a record. It's a long time. I love microbes, as you see. <laughs> and I could still talk more about them. There's heaps of stuff we didn't even. I only showed what five slides out of. 500 <laughs> yeah not five but yeah got quite a few more that we didn't even touch on so if there's um we'll see if there's any anything to get back into <laughs> so i'll wait a little bit to see if there's any questions uh because there's a 30 second delay that i got here and i want to say microbes i can summarize by saying microbes are rad they will help you in many ways if you've got deficiencies if you've got toxicity problems if you've got pathogenic problems microbes are the way and by introducing them to start with that's eliminating a lot of the problems a lot of people if they have an ipm program would include microbes because that's eliminates possible future problems it's really good so i hope this has been a really good talk today on microbes get your questions in chat yes says terence or it's going to be over for today. Thanks, Stony Creek. He says good, good stuff. How good is the opening experience? Yep. We all love microbes. Yes. That was today's. They just so help. It's, well, it's free help, really. It's free nutrients. It's free defense. It's free increased trichome production which we're all about cannabis farmers a trichome production well i am so it's 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 just a win there's no other way you just got to really dial it in hey blinky how you going blinky thank you son nice slight terence i don't rate the smell of okay i just set my beds up for the microbes ah, says jeff i've just I've set my beds up for the microbes. Well done, Jeff. Yep, they love it. If you can look after the microbes, they will look after you. It's a good way to put it. And I spend a lot of time and effort into my microbes, like as if I'm their leader or their their parents, but it's, it's a better word for it. And I really try to help them out. And I want to put humidity meters into this design that I've got for a worm castings cabinet it's pretty cool all right champagne microbe farming it says banana farmer not worm farming that uh, yeah that's kind of what it is it is it's you're getting a increased because the, the microbes are getting vectored round on the worms back so they can travel different areas because remember the lifespan of a microbe is only a full stop it's very very small Bit of a dot on a pencil of paper so that's really good it is microbe farming yes vectored by worms <laughs> and you know the worms is good because it's you know it's sheath of the worms it's actually releases a little bit of ammonium so you get a little bit of a bonus there from the verm castings monty i've got massive pots full of microbes hell yeah blinky that's the go banana what's that's what you're doing when you have a worm bin Yes, sure is. Microbe farming. Big fat worms too. Oh, well, remember the three different types of worms. There's your endogeic and then your epigeic and your enic. So your endo means internal 
So that's underneath the soil. Your epi, which is on the surface, is the ones you want. And your anique, they're the big, fat, massive ones, and they're the ones that go deep. And they eat worm, worm castings, so you don't want them. So really try and just get your epigeic worms, which are on the surface, bradling worms, um, compost worms. There's your red wigglers. There's many different types. But, um, yeah, wait for a – if you wait for the rains to come and scoop some out from outside, that might encourage some epigeic. So be careful in which worms you get. Linky, what's your technique for your micro bins? No worms, no microbes. Uh, the way the worms air rate. What's this? The way the worms air rate mix the soil up as well as fertilizing. Yes, that's right. Worms. One of my um, compost. What do I do? Organic compost. No. What was that class called? Organic compost farming or something like that. That was a course I did. And the teacher of that, she was a worm biologist. And she went into the worm section and quite detailed. And it was interesting just to see. Yeah, that's why I know a bit extra about worms, I suppose. There they go. I can nearly do a discussion on worms. If I pulled up those lecture notes, you'd just see half of those were all about worms because she just went right into it. And if you look on some of those casting's videos I got, you can see the lady's dress and I'll just put my head over the top of it so it looks like I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> no one's picked up on that. <laughs> uh, just good soil, sunshine. Oh, I thought you may have been doing that KNF, Korean natural farming. Yeah. Many different ways to grow in many different substrates. You'll still achieve, even in rotting bad soil, you still might get a result. You'd be surprised. So there's so much techniques. So if, say, I can't tell anybody to do it this way. All I can suggest is whatever works for you. There's plenty of ways. But compost and organics is the go. I promote and I promote safe practices. Right, I'm not going to keep talking. This is full on. It's going to be blooming. It's already lunchtime. All right. I think we've gone really well today. Um, on we, for next week's topic, uh, I haven't got one. So maybe someone can suggest compost or someone can start asking about, yeah, compost probably. Um, I'm sure I should just title it. Um, then we can go on about humic acid as well because um, it goes on a bit about that. And we can see why and how the, the H plus ions, the protons and the carboxylate ions, how they work in substrates because that's, a lot of soil organic matter has a lot of those in it, and that's the pH of the soil. Your OH raises it, and your H plus protons reduce it. So that's how it, um, how your soil pH works. And pH works, really. Uh, banana farmer says, we have a, a storm drain, oh yeah, rain with massive earthworms. They get up to a 700 long and an inch round, wow. That's, and they're the energetic ones. They're the ones that eat worm castings. It's spelled A-N-E-E-C, A-N-E-C-E-C, A-N-E-C-I-C, -E 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 something like that. Yeah, they're the ones you don't want in your worm castings bin. Don't put them in. I put one in ages ago, and then I, after I put it in, because I was really excited outside at rain heaps, and I was going out scooping them up, and after I put one in, I realised later, oh, no, that's going to be eating my worm castings I want to harvest. <laughs> Great show again, Ozzy. Thank you for your support, Dave, 1969. Good organic soil. Healthy soils to go. Yes, you, and it, 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 it has a buffer in it. That's what the humic, the soil organic matter, it has buffers in it. So if things go a little bit stray left or right, you know, pathogens, pro toxicities, it'll pull it back in line. So it might be harder to set up at the start, but it's a lot easier in the outcome. Uh, some native superworms. Yeah, that's those ones. They're good for bait. Yeah, mate, they probably would be. Yeah, throw them for your fishing. Good stuff. All right, that's it. I think we're out. Thanks, everybody, for rocking up and those um, donations too. Thank you heaps and heaps for that. I really appreciate that. To uh, who was it through to Vin? and medicated TV.
thank you people a lot. It will help. And I'll hope to see you all next, same time next week in seven days, earlier two hours. This is an hour 50 this has been going for. Good work. You just keep me excited with my microbes. Woohoo. <laughs> and so safe, safe practices always. And happy growing, happy breeding, and good health to you all. Bye-bye. Cheers. Good night.